On today's show, it's mock draft time. 16 teams, nine categories. Michael, absolute Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. I'm having all sorts of trouble getting this 16-team mock draft to go. We are trying for about the fourth time. Hopefully this time it works. You don't have to get to see this stuff behind the scenes. So let's uh, get it rolling in a second. And I am definitely, I will actually, I would be perspiring if I hadn't put my sweat block on this morning. Sweat block is the doctor created and doctor recommended formula for antiperspirants that if you suffer from excessive sweating, hyperhidrosis, this is what you need. You get the wipes, you put them on before you go to bed, you wake up the next morning and then you're ready to go. It covers you for up to seven days. You don't have to worry about what shirt you're going to pick to see whether the color is going to show up the sweat stains. That's all a thing of the past. You've seen this before on the shelves at CVS. You've seen it at Amazon. And now you can get it for 20% off at sweatblock.com by using the promo code locked on. So head to sweatblock.com, use the promo code locked on, and save 20% off your antiperspirant needs. I'm going to be worn out by the end of this for sure. Built Bar is what I need. The best tasting protein bar ever. Whatever the most delicious flavor you can think of, it's there. Raspberry, apple, strawberry, apple almond crisp, in fact. Uh, cherry and lime, cherry bar, sea, co- cookies and cream, coconut. So many great flavors, but not only do they taste delicious, they're also good for you. 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. Built Bar is the delicious protein bar. It is the healthy protein bar, and now it is the 15% off protein bar. Because you can get them at built.com by using the promo code LOCKED15 and save 15%. So get yourself loads of boxes, load them into your cart, use that promo code LOCKED15 and save 15% on the best tasting protein bar ever. All right. Let's see if I can get this mock draft up and running. All right, so I think we've got the draft room sorted, ready to go. Let's flick over there and have a look. Got all teams there. No um, no nonsense going on, thankfully. Let's hope we're all good to go. I'm again picking at number one, which has happened last time. Let's throw Big Chungus into the queue. Get queue up his music. We are 14 seconds away. And holy shit, 16 teams, nine categories, head-to-head. This has been a frustrating, with 30 minutes delayed on doing this. So everyone who is in this draft, thank you so much for being a part of it and dealing with the frustrations uh, that have been going on with uh, with trying to get this uh, trying to get this going. And there's that annoying fan tracks horn. Let's turn that noise off. Big Chungus, there he goes. Big, big Chungus, big Chungus, big Chungus. Big, big... All right, Tamantha. Who kept getting skipped when we did it? It was something weird. They just deleted a team, but kept other teams in. Didn't pick play. It was so weird. Jim Harden goes at number two. The Kyrie news. Who knows, man? By the time this podcast is actually released, Kyrie may have said, nah, it's just joking, guys. I'm vaccinated. I'm back and ready to play. But there's nothing wrong with taking Harden there at number two. Steph Curry goes at number three. Shawnee Randall is picking Yanni at number four. That, to me, is the pretty clear top four. But if you wanted to take Towns there, no problem with it at all. So let's see what uh, Jose Inya. I don't know how to pronounce that name. I'm going to assume it's Jose Inya. Let's see how he decides to go at five. It's got to be Towns. Could be Lillard. But I think it's going to be Towns there. And now we have got a long, long wait until we get back to uh, to my selection because I picked it one. So I'm picking again at 32. It is a long-ass wait to get back there. Um, so Towns does go at five. Lillard goes at six. Not all that surprising there. Bring my team up. Okay, so after Lillard at six goes Durant at seven. Someone said, I hope Josh doesn't forget to press record. And you just made me panic. It is recording, so we're good. Uh, Durant goes at seven. Nakic is picking here, gets Tatum at eight. A little bit different to how the first one of these drafts went. I think Tatum went at 10 in that one. So Embiid's still on the board. Paul George, Bradley Beal, those guys still on the board. 
see what direction that these uh, people start to go with. Um, let's have a look. Okay, so... All right, interesting. Well, Luka Doncic down at nine. I think that's probably the right spot for him. So Durant goes at seven, Tatum at eight, Doncic at nine, Paul George at 10. Probably would have gone a different direction, but there's nothing wrong with Paul George. I probably would have taken Embiid, but no no problem with George there at all. Uh, at 11, we're going with Embiid, and then we've got to have Beal and Davis. I would guess, I would guess Beal and Davis are the next guys that go. Um, it's installing making his pick, Bradley Beal. This draft much smoother than the last one, which was an absolute disaster. So Beal at 12, Davis at 13. I really like that from sports med, Kevin Liu, MD. I'm going to guess he's a sports medicine doctor. Just a guess of what a hunch that is. And then Nectarios is at 14, Ed Malloy at 15, and RJ at 16 to round this out. Trey Young goes at 14 there, pick number 14 to Nectarios. We're about to finish off this first round. Ed Malloy was there and then he dropped out. Hopefully Ed can get back to make his pick. Um, who's excited for NHL season starting today? I'm going to go watch the Kraken's first game after this mock draft against the Knights. The Golden Knights, sorry. Imagine choosing your team name and getting rid of the loss out of your team name, Lass, and then adding an extra name into your nickname. Ridiculous. Should be just with Las Vegas Knights. Golden Knights is a terrible name. Anyway, Bam at 15. I don't like Bam at 15. He is as, as um, pontificated... At the beginning of the year, I was worried about Bam losing assists to Kyle Lowry, and it's happened way worse than I thought it would. Now, that can change in the season, but again, it's something that I say all the time. When you look at something and you go, this is probably how this is going to work out, this is how I expect it to work out, and then it does work out, it's very hard for me to dismiss it and go, oh, well, that's just that'll, that'll correct. It could, but it's very hard for me to dismiss that. And then to round out round one, Fred Van Vliet goes at 16 and RJ backs him up with Zach Levine at 17. Now, picking at the turn, like Nectarios and RJ and even me at the start and Timantha at the start of the draft, you've got a long wait between your next pick. Like, I'm still 15 picks away, so I don't know what's going to happen with my pick or who's going to be there. It's going to be rough. So if you want Levine and you think he's the 24th best player, but you're not confident about the guys you've got ahead, then you just take him. Lamelo goes at 18, Sabonis at 19. It is a bit surprising to see Lamelo go ahead of, say, a Jimmy Butler um, or even a Rudy Gobert, but there's nothing wrong with it. Big Kev, big Dr. Kev, he's going to make his pick here. Coming up at number 20, I think Butler and Gobert, they're, they're hanging around for some reason. Even, um, even what's he, what's, how do you say it? It's Bosa, it's Big Bosa, Bosa Zip. Vucevic. Yeah, he's still hanging around as well. Ah, oh, there he goes at number 20. Big Vooch goes at 20. I'm a little worried that Vooch might not be a top 30 guy this season in Chicago. 20 to 30, it doesn't take much to drop yourself down that far. And that's a possibility. I think it's installing getting Jimmy Butler at 21 as a steal. We do worry about Butler, of course, and injuries. But I think that's a steal. You know, there's every chance in the world. In fact, it's almost a guarantee. Well, not a guarantee, but pretty close to it. That Jimmy finishes higher than Bam this season. Yeah, that was six, seven picks apart here. Uh, Rudy Gobert goes at number 22. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. I'm going to try and play as many drops in this podcast because it's like a 200 plus pick draft and I'm doing it by myself. So I need a break and I need to have a drink. Shea goes at 23. Could be great on a per game basis. You do worry that the extra caution with um, extra caution with what do you call it um, resting could be a problem for sure but you know I, I still think it's I still think it's worth a selection you can hear Obi outside the door shaking his body around trying to get in and by shaking his body around like, you know with dogs there thing where they just shake their whole body and his ears flap against his head and it makes this noise when he does it to like get rid of his anxiety Obi, he's just like us. He has crippling mental illness. Back to back. Make your pick back to back. Still waiting. Just letting that time run right down. Come on, mate. Make a pick. 
Let's go. Come on. And then he lets the time run out and takes LeBron James. A fucking goat outside. It's just a goat. No, it's a fucking goat. All right, let's see what Nakic can do. Let's start smashing these out. Don Mitchell goes there. Just got a lot of sounds here, haven't I? He's Don. He's good. Forgot to play my uh, Zach Levine one earlier, so let's just do it now. Um, Trong really thinking about this. Is there a way that I can change? I think I can change the draft pick time. I'm going to drop it down. 45 seconds. All right, just to get this moving along. So Trong takes Zion at pick 26. Very, very worried about Zion and that foot injury. I'm really worried about what's going to happen there. Um, Maga Porter Jr. goes at 27. I guess he's falling with some fear of vaccination, but I actually think that's a pretty good spot. I think Don Mitchell was a pretty good spot at 25 as well. And we are getting back to me. Jose coming up here at pick number 28. What is he going to do? What I'm going to do is still a mystery. Lonzo Ball, Goose, Anthony Edwards. Like I've got Jokic. Hmm, what direction am I going to go, though? Well, DeAndre Ayton goes at 28. Christian Wood, the crucifix, goes at 29. I've got one center, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to need more centers later on. I'm probably going to end up punting blocks with Jokic, is my guess. Um, or do I take Porzingis? Huh. Too early for Porzingis. Jalen Brown? Yeah, maybe it's Jalen. Let's throw him into the queue. Chris Paul goes at 30. I, I got back-to-backs, don't I? Maybe we go with... Hmm, is it too early for Alonzo? Is it too early for Anthony Edwards? Probably is. Julius Randle, the double royal, still there as well. Whew. I'm not, look, I'm not going to get any of these guys. Like Alonzo, Edwards, they're not going to come back to me. And given relative scarcity in the league this big, maybe we look at them there. Ah, you bastard. Took Anthony Edwards. All right, Jalen Brown's an obvious one. I know he does have COVID and he could miss the start of the year. But that's okay. I'll take him with one of my picks. And then, is it Julius Randle? Or, or, is it Lonzo Ball? I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Lonzo and getting assists is hard, even harder in a league like this. Lonzo and Jokic, good start. My points aren't particularly high anyway. It's very high for Lonzo. I understand that. And I could have taken Randall. I'm a little... And, but again, projections and all that stuff changes when your league depth changes because the relative scarcity of stats does alter. And I actually had in my projections Lonzo higher than Julius Randall here. I don't feel particularly confident with that because, again, when I do my projections, I don't go in and say, I'm putting this guy ahead of this guy. That's just how the numbers come out. You know, look, you could put Booker here, Ingram, um, Darren Fox, who just went, or well, Randall goes at 35, Porzingis at 34, Julius Randall at... Um, I completely forgot what I was going to say. Uh, Julius Randall went at 35 and Darren Fox went at 36. Brandon Ingram goes at 37. Someone's asking for 30 second timers on the picks. Should we do it? Yeah, let's fire it up. Oh. No one's actually auto picked, apart from that one guy earlier on. But he's back online now. Just really running it down here. Brandon Ingram goes at 37. Towns for MVP on the clock. Goes with Clinker Pala at 38. I think that's a pretty solid pick. Pretty happy with how my team started. Jokic, Ball, and Jalen Brown. Tron goes next at pick 39, and he goes with Devin Booker. I think that's fine. You see at the top there of the queue, Westbrook and Irving are sitting there. Don't know if anyone's going to do that. Who's going to take the plunge on Kyrie? Again, by the time that you're listening to this, Kyrie may have, may have changed his mind. I literally have no idea. So now there's this... Um, 
Ja Morant goes at pick 40. I think it's too high for him. He's scoring pretty well in preseason, but again, you worry about some of the other issues that he can have. Just look at this Kyrie stuff. Now it's saying that Kyrie is saying he's not anti-vax, but he's protesting vaccines because he doesn't like people losing their job b- because they're not getting vaccinated. I, I don't know, man. It just doesn't make a lot of sense, the, some of the stuff that he goes through. So is is he anti... He's, so he's not getting vaccinated despite not being vaccinated? Sorry, he's sorry, he's, he's not getting vaccinated despite not being anti-vax? I don't know what he's actually talking about there. I'll have to dig into that story after we finish this um, draft. Rashawn Holmes, back-to-back again. He's in the draft room but not making picks for some reason. Rashawn Holmes goes there at pick 41. Chris Middleton at 42. Um... Yeah, he says he's here. All right, cool. Make picks then. Sorry, it could be something screwing up on his end. I can't be too harsh on the bloke. Middleton's at 42. We are a mile away from my next pick. An absolute truckload of time. Uh, Ananobi, the Jedi, goes at 43. But what about Scar? OG. Stop, OG. Uh, you better stop, OG. OG's obviously been amazing throughout the preseason. We hope that can continue, but I reckon he's going to have a real red hot start to the year. The amazing thing is he's been able to ramp up his usage while maintaining good efficiency. That's super hard to do usually. And now Dr. Kev has dropped out. Kev, get back online, make your pick, mate. You got 30 seconds. True Holiday goes at number 44. And uh, Yusuf Nurkic at 45. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. And then Toby Harris at 46. Um, I think I am a TH. T to the H. Yeah, TH for life. Wow, what a run for audio drops there. Russell Westbrook goes at 47. I don't mind it. You've got to be in the right team build to deal with that. And what's Ed Malloy's team look like? He's got Lamello and Bam, which they're not strong, strong free throw shooters. So I think there is some real value in that. So that's a pretty good pick in that area. And now to finish off round three was CJ McCollum. And then to start round four is Jonas Valanciunas. Jonas Vassal in Or the player that ESPN thinks is ranked 115th, Jonas Valanciunas. He goes at 49. That's obviously way more in line with where he should be drafted. So we are still, you know, 16, 15 picks away from my one. I don't know what I'm going to be looking at with this next pick. But I... I'm not good in blocks. I've got a center. I don't need to prioritize that, but I will need to make sure I get some rebounds. So getting a uh, rebounding big man, Johnny Collins, is going to be a target for me, I would say. Well, there goes, look, look at that centers now. Jonas goes, Jaron Jackson goes, Rob Williams goes at 51. Um, someone just said Q's, and I don't know what that means, what you're talking about. Johnny, ah, Johnny Collins goes at 52. I don't think we're going to Logan Roy that just yet. It's not the exact... It's a bit too far away to Logan Roy it. Although Sportsmed Kev said he wanted to pick next to me so he could uh, annoy me with picks. He's actually nowhere near me, but that's fine. 53, it's installing. It's still installing. Make your pick. Kyrie's still floating around. Miles turned to Jonte Murray. That's about this area for them. Well, there goes Miles at 53. I like that one. Who do I want now? I said Beef Stew, maybe? It's such a disgusting nickname. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. Dejounte Murray goes at 54. Maybe we will be looking at um, Isaiah. I, just, I do need to get a center to get my rebounds and field goals and keep them high. He's ranked 77th on fan tracks, apparently. That'll work for me at pick 60-something. Whatever my next pick is, 64. I think he might go ahead of that. And then do I... What do I Jesus, what do I do at that spot then to get rebounds? I could be in real trouble. Aiden, just really thinking about it here. Let's go, Aiden. Make a pick. Time is running out. And he does. He goes with Malcolm Brogdon, who is dealing with a shoulder problem at the moment. Hopefully, he's ready to go. But this guy always seems to have something weird happening with his body. It's usually lower body. So shoulder is, I guess, encouraging from that perspective. 
but it's still not ideal. Um, back to back. Can you make a pick, my guy? You've been in the room this whole time. And you've been autoed both times. Let's go. Let's make it. I'd love to know what actually is happening on his end that's not allowing him to pick. Because he's able to chat, but not able to pick. Auto again. What is going on with this guy? Gordon Haywood pick there. I don't mind that Gordon Haywood pick. I think he, on a per game basis, he can easily beat that number. Uh, Nakic goes with D'Angelo Russell. Pretty solid pick there as well. Although, you know, is a little high for D'Angelo, perhaps. Kyrie's really just the interesting one there, isn't it? Um, back to back is here. He's just thinking too much and just letting the timer run out in every pick. That is, that's pretty poor draft etiquette, to be honest. He's, I've got my cue and just letting them go through. That's, that's, that's pretty weird. Anyway, Draymond Green at number 59. We know how good he was last year. You've got to deal with his low scoring, but that is, that's real value there. It's real value, but the scoring is obviously a, pr a problem. <sighs> Halliburton for me Garland for me I do need Isaiah Stewart I need that big man but let's throw Garlo and Halliburton onto the queue oops hang on Halliburton onto the queue just to get myself some extra guards is there any other center that I could get there and Gafford and probably not getting them at that point Jose just letting it run down again has he got the queue going too that he's panicking about no, there he goes. Terry Rogier, right as the clock runs down. Shawnee Randall is picking next. He goes with Ben Simmons. I, I don't know what to make of Simmons. I think it's a right spot to get him. He's back with the team. Is he going to play with the team? I talked about it on the bus. Fuck off, Athens. A oh, fuck off. A hey, fuck off. That's, if you didn't know, that's Isaiah Stewart going at 62. Maximum Derek White goes at 63. Maximum Derek. All right, so it's my pick now. So what am I going to do? Hmm. Well, I'm going to take Tyrese Halliburton. Let's just draft him. Um, and then the rebounds is going to be the real problem here. Like, how do I get rebounds onto my team? My assists are strong. I'm going to have to reach up for a big, but who is it? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm not going to reach up. Let's just take Garland and get big. Get a big later. That's rough, man. That Stuart pick killed me. I could have gone in with a Jarrett Allen. I could have taken a Yucca Purtle there. But I don't love it. Siakam, a no-brainer if I knew he was going to play. Well, play soon. But Tamantha takes that, takes that flyer. And again, I don't mind that pick. I think it's pretty strong. Getting a little worried that uh, Cade Cunningham's not going to be ready for the start of the season. Just looking at the top of the queue there. A bit worried about that. Bogdan Bogdanovich goes at 67. That feels too high for me. He was 64th last year. Feels a little too high. Shawnee Randall ready to pick. Who? Kevin Porter Jr. Cousin Kev. Yeah, look, he was he's he's gonna have some stinkers. There is no denying that. He's gonna have some absolute turd burgers with like some two of 12 shooting type nights and he's going to have some big games where he has 30 points and 11 assists that can be a problem in head-to-head -head because you know you're in one week matchups but you know the big matchups will work well you just don't know how to predict those colin sexton goes at 69 giggity kyle lowry falling a little bit here he's probably someone i'd start to look at if i was these other guys which i'm not but i'll just throw him in the queue just in case not looking like karis levert's going to be ready to begin the season which is annoying there goes Cade at 70. 80s for me, probably for Cade. Although, you know, his projections come out nice in a league like this. I need that big man, though. Is it PJ Washington Jr. that I have to try and grab? Hopefully, I can get Pirtle with my next pick. I'm not like confident that's going to happen because I'm picking at, what, 96? So, yeah, it's, not, it's, it's just not going to happen, let's be honest. Um, 
after Cade goes Jeremy Grant at 71, Mikhail Bridges at 72. Like that Bridges pick. Grant, I think it's fine. I would have taken you know, some other guys ahead of him. Let's throw Jarrett Allen. To, hey, back to back. Just made the pick. Well done, my guy. Uh, Bob Covington goes at 63 there. We are getting to Kyrie Irving stage. Now, if this is a 12-team league, he should have gone. But because it's 16, this is not your sixth or seventh pick. It's your fifth pick. If he's there for me on the flip around at 96-97, Kyrie, uh, I, I will take him. Kyle Lowry goes at 74 to Aiden. I like that one. I believe Aiden is in Toronto anyway. So he's he's probably a big Kyle Lowry fan, is my guess. Um, all right. <laughs> Aiden, give me that booty. All right. Fine. Take the booty. Ah, Krish with Jacob. Not Jacob. Jacob Pertl. Irving still available. Yes, he is, Kev. Do not mention players that are undrafted in the draft room, although that is obviously sticking out like dog's balls. I, I don't... It's just so frustrating with Irving. Like, you just don't know. I, I think... I, I will take him at, yeah, my 6-7 pick if he's there. So I, I, I can sort of recover from missing out on my 7th pick. Not well, but I can. And I just... Some of the shit is just so cryptic with this bloke. No, I'm not anti-vax. I just don't want to get a vaccination. Okay, Kyrie. I just have to, yeah. I, I, I do have to go read that story, obviously. But we're drafting, so I can't. Marcus Smart goes at 76. Kemba Walker goes at 77. I like the Smart one. The Walker one, I'm like, I'm souring a bit on Kemba, but I don't mind that. Um... Macaulay Jokic somehow power forward eligible on fan tracks, by the way. So I'm just moving around because if I want to draft Jared Allen, I can put him into that center spot. There's no way Allen's going to be around there yet. I might end up with Kelly Olynyk in this spot. Ooh, Evan Mobley at 78. That's high, man. I, I like him. Um, But it's probably too high. Interesting to see Mobley go ahead of teammate Jared Allen. I think... I think he's better. I'm pretty sure he's better than him. But you don't really see it happen very often. Um, well, there goes Jarrett Allen. So after Mobley was Conley, Miles, Bridges, and Jarrett Allen at pick 81. So there's, you know, that's my cue done. I'm going to have to reassess when it gets back to me in 16 picks as to what I'm doing at the center position now. Hmm. Trong says, won't Kyrie lose a lot of money? Will he cave and comply like other players? I don't think he cares. To be honest, he, he donates so much of his money to charity that, you know, I'm talking millions of dollars, that I think, he'll, I think he actually doesn't mind that for what he thinks is, are his principles, which sometimes his principles are spot on. Sometimes they're pretty crazy, like you know, the anti-vax stuff, which he's not, apparently. Um, Kelly Linick goes at 82. It's very high for Kelly Linick. Very high. Norman Powell at 83 is good. But I get it. Like, you want to get a center. And there's just not much happening after that. Maybe it's going to have to be Mason Plumlee that I'm going to have to take. Oh, sorry about that. Al Horford dealing with a COVID diagnosis as well. I think he's an option for me. Once we get to my pick. Mo Bumba? Pretty interested to see what Bumba can do. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five. Karis Levert goes at 84. Could be value, could be terrible. Fractured back is a no joke, man. This is is he missing a week, two months? I I, I just I don't know. The Pacers, they fly under the radar a little bit in, in being not particularly transparent. The TJ Warren one, even when he hurt his foot at the start of last season, it wasn't like we don't knock like he's out for the year. And then he comes back, hey, surprise guys, still not ready. I think some of that's a TJ thing too, but they're not all that transparent. Oh, it's installing. Ended up with Kyrie. He got auto-picked. Didn't have a cue. Oh, well, I guess that's what they call stiff shit. But you know what? At that spot, it actually might be okay. Budrick Heald goes at 86. It's not... It's probably the right area here. Um... Top of that queue, 
Boucher, Dinwiddie, Wiggins, Barrett. I don't like them in that spot, in those spots. Aiden making his pick. Is he going to go Toronto again? Or ex-Toronto last time with Lowry. I feel like Aiden's in every one of these mock drafts. Oh, he does go with Boucher, but he got auto-drafted. Unlucky for you, Aiden. I just, with Barnes there, with Achua there, with Birch there a full season, I think when everyone's healthy, I just don't see how Boucher plays the same amount that he did last season. People think that I'm wrong on that, and I could be. And people seem to think that I'm wrong when I say that Nurse doesn't trust Boucher to play big minutes. That I know that I'm right with. Um, but maybe he does come in and play 25 minutes and is equally as productive. I just think that it is a little bit more crowded there now. PJ Washington Jr. goes at 89, and we are rounding back, getting close to my pick. Rowan Barrett Jr. goes at 90. I tweeted about this yesterday. All right, and if you are watching this or listening to this podcast, let's get your thoughts on this. NBA players with juniors or thirds or fourths after their name, it doesn't make any sense for the back of their jersey to say, with the, the example I came up yes, not came up, I was watching it, it was the Blazers. It said, and Dennis Smith Jr. was playing. Greg Brown the third was playing, and it says Smith Jr. on the back of the jersey or Brown the third. When Carter Jr. goes at ninety-one, there just so just listen to like, they are not Smith Jr. He is Dennis Jr. If it's a full name, it's Dennis Smith Jr. But he is Dennis Jr. He's not the second Smith. There's been plenty of Smiths. He's the second Dennis Smith. All right, so it's Dennis Jr. Or it's just, look, if you were writing, look, a writing style guide. Um, anyway, after Wendell Carter goes Spencer Dinwiddie, you know, if you're writing full name, you'd write Dennis Smith Jr., Greg Brown the third. But if you're writing, it's just Brown or Smith or Dennis Jr. So I, and I understand that it is, it could be the NBA player's choice that they want to have that, you know, honoring their family and put that on their jersey. But then it gets to an interesting situation for a guy like um, KJ Martin in Houston, who doesn't go by Kenyon Martin Jr. He goes by KJ Martin. But his jersey says Martin Jr. on the back. So is that his choice? If that was his choice, why does he only display that on his jersey? But he never goes by that in real life. Anyway, rant over. It's getting my pick. After Dinwiddie goes Fournier, Mason, Plumley, Athens, you absolute dickhole. Um, my pick. I've got to reassess now because I am on the clock and I've got 28 seconds left. And then Nikhil Alexander-Walker goes at 95, which is a pretty good spot. I need a big man. I need a... Let's go with Bumba. I don't know why I said it that way. Let's take Bumba. Oh, no. Don't I want Bumba? Let's go with Bumba. All right. And what do I do? Oh, Gafford was staring right at me. Um, let's, what else have I got on my team? Mm, Twenty six seconds left on the clock. I'm going to take. Let's go with my man Giddy, who I do like in this area. All right, Joshy Giddy. There we go. Still need a forward, apparently. Is Halliburton forward eligible? No, he's not. That's surprising. All right, there's my picks. I didn't like... I don't like those particularly, but I think it's worth... A f I'm never going to get them again. Yeah, the other guys I'm looking at there is Jordan Poole, DeAnthony Melton. Um, Dan Gafford could have been an option. Suggsy, Greeny, the two Jalens, Mitty Robinson option, Brooke Lopez. But I'm okay with getting those guys. And then I pick again now at 128. I think yeah, and Isaiah Roby is an option for me there. Desmond Bain. Maybe it's him. Now that Bain, it's more like the Bane from the Harley Quinn animated series versus the Bane from Dark Knight Rises. The Bane from Dark Knight Rises is more like Desmond Bain. Something like that. It's a little bit too hard to do that consistently. All right. I'm losing my mind here. Um, Giddy. Someone said, is Josh Giddy over Suggs now? I think it's it's a bit of a toss-up. Um, and in some other situations, I'd go with Green. And I could have... Uh, I'd go with Suggs. Now, I took Giddy over Jalen Green and Jalen Suggs. I just wanted to boost those assists up. So that's really why I took Giddy there. Um so after Joshy Giddy goes Jalen Green, goes Jalen Suggs, goes Dan Gafford. But 
again, that's not an every time situation. I did actually reach down my draft board because I wanted to get more assists on. But if I'm just looking at theoretical best player available, and actually I did an interview, interview, I did a get, I, I was on Dan Besbrus's podcast today and we talked about the idea of best player available. I think it's a really interesting discussion that you can go listen to. But when people say, oh, I just take best player available, you don't know who the best player available is. You just don't know. Right, and, but what I can tell you is that I feel really, really confident that Josh Giddy will give me more assists than Jalen Green. So Jalen Green might be the best player available, but I, I, I don't know that because your definition of best is completely subjective. But what I do know is if I needed a big man or if I needed assists, like those guys fit into those groups very, very clearly. So I think that that best player available thought process gets thrown out there way too much and used incorrectly. But you can hear me explain that for like 10 minutes on Dan's show. Uh, Dan Gafford goes at 100. Devontae Graham goes at 101. Keldon Johnson at 102, consistently going too early in my mind. The pencil Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. 103, and then Big Al Horford at 104. Horford was one I probably should have looked at instead of Bumba, but oh well. Back to back, is he going to run that run that clock all the way down? Picking a pick one man in a deep draft like this, you got to wait so long. Jordan, the swimmer, pool goes at one hundred five. Pretty good spot for Pooley. Obviously, value will be higher earlier and then drop off as the season goes on. If you haven't seen it, the news is Dylan Brooks is out for the next uh, two to three weeks with that broken hand that the Grizzlies were listing as right right thigh soreness so shout out to them to consistently being absolute bastards with their injury reporting Johnny Isaac goes at one at 106 I don't know man Isaac reckons Christmas do I believe him no I I don't know Boyan Bogdanovich at 107 that's a really solid pick I think it's installing has he recovered from um, auto drafting Kyrie Irving that's the big question I need some rebounds on my team. Who is going to be my rebounder? Because there's not a lot of rebounds left. Derek Favors, Montrez Harrell, is that Roby? Yeah, maybe it's Roby. Looks like Bruce Brown's going to get a bump while Kyrie's out. I imagine Brown is the starter in Kyrie's place, not Pat Mills, not Cameron Thomas. I think it will be Bruce Brown. Or they might start Millsap next to Griffin and push um, Durant down to the three. Jordan Clarkson gets auto-drafted. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. And then Mitchie Robinson. And Mitch Robinson says, I'll take it from here. <laughs> as, as Dr. Kev says, I'll take it from here. Yes, you will. Malik Beasley, Nick Terrace at 110. I am very much out on Malik Beasley. I just don't know what his role is going to be, and I think it's going to be smaller than we expect. Yeah, I'm out on Beasley at that spot at least. Larry Nance goes at 111. Nance won't play 31 minutes that he did last season. I feel confident in that. Uh, Reggie Jackson goes at 112. That's a pretty okay pick, I think. Pretty okay. How's that for like just enthusiastic praise? Hmm. Scotty... Oh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Andre Drummond at 113. My guy. My guy. Uh, Scotty Barnes goes at 114. And then Tyler Hero goes at 115. Everyone has a hero. True. Zero people shouldn't have a hero. Yes. And then uh, Dr. Kev goes with DeAndre Hunter at 116, which I do like that for Hunter, but... Uh, I don't know what to expect from him. Brooke Lopez at 117. That's a good pick at that spot. Not at like 90 where his ADP sits on uh, Yahoo at the moment. What happened to Gary Harris? Uh, Good question, Tamantha. He forgot how to shoot. Depressed penis. Sadiq Bey goes at 118. One last explanation of what the depressed penis is because people always ask. Depressed penis. His name is Sad Dick. There you go. That's it. I'm not casting any aspersions on the functionality or general mood of his genitalia. That's just what it is. Um, Aiden, let's go, my guy. Make another pick. Kyle Anderson for you? 
Who's going to take John Wall? There's the, there's the real one that's standing out at the top of the queue. Remember when I got dicked over on that in that 20-teamer and I just got auto-drafted with John Wall? That was fun times, wasn't it? Nerlens Noel goes at 119. Big Nerlens. Nerlens Noel. Why is his name Noel? What about the guy from Oasis? Is that Noel Gallagher? Of course it is not. Montrez Harrell, the table at 120. He was an option for me, but obviously not anymore. As we're getting closer to my selection, we're about, we're halfway through this big ass 16 teamer. Oh no, the wave pool, DeAnthony Melton. Where's my oh no noise? Is it this one? Oh no! Yes, it is. And then Steve Adams goes at 122. Adams showing some stuff in the preseason, hitting free throws, grabbing rebounds. I'm not 100% convinced, but good work out there. TJ McConnell at 123. I get a lot of hate. People think that, oh man, you hate TJ. He's definitely going to play. Yes, he is definitely going to play. I don't think he's going to play 27 minutes a night. He also took his steal rate up from 1.5 steals per 36 to 2.6 last season. So there is gigantic scope for that to drop off. And there's a new coach and a slower pace. I just don't know. I just don't have the confidence that TJ is going to come close to replicating what he did last season. Now in this draft, yeah, getting a guy that if and the injuries to Brogdon, Levert, Warren obviously helped TJ. But there's no guarantee. Fah, Jose, you bastard! There's no guarantee that TJ is able to reproduce what he did last season. All right, so I've got to reassess now because my man Roby has gone. Zubats for me, probably. Dunk Robinson goes. Let's just search up Ivica, who I'm not massively high on. But I need rebounds. Do I go with my man Desmond Bain? Bob Portis goes at 126. Ooh, maybe a little bit high. And then Lamarcus. Oh, that's a good one too at 127 from Tamantha. So let's have a look. What what have we got for bigs here? I think Zubats has got to be an option for me. All right, let's take. Ivica. And then... What else can I add? Another rebounder? Who is it? Hmm. Jaden McDaniels? Or Desi Bain? Let's take Desi there, I think. All right, let's just get Des Bain at 120. I don't love that. I'm just sort of making a point that I'm a little bit more higher on him than what I was you know, before Dylan Brooks' injury news came out. All right. So now back to Timantha, who I think we've got a good pick there in LaMarcus Aldridge. I do like that selection. Yeah, at round in round eight, it's pretty good in this sort of draft. Um, Tyrese Maxey falling down with the news that Simmons is back. That, that, that's the problem with, with drafting him. Obviously, yeah, there you go. Jaden McDaniels, who I was going to take at 130. And now I can go take a piss if I wanted to because it's you know, 30 picks until my next one. I'm not going to because, of course, I'm here with you recording this show. Dan Green goes at 131. I need a drink. I've been talking for too long. I forgot to soda stream my water today, so it's only still. It's not um, sparkling. The wild thing, Jay Sean Tate goes at 132. I have a sneaking suspicion that Sean Randall may have actually been the one who suggested to me that we call Jay Sean Tate the wild thing. Shawnee, I don't know if that's true or not. I might type it in the chat. Let's see. Sean, was it you who suggested I call Tate the wild thing? Let's see. Maybe I'm just misremembering that. Um, so he goes at 132, which is pretty good. I don't know how they're going to work out the Tate House Gordon minutes. They should just give him to Tate, but I don't know what Steve Silas is going to do. Terrence Mann. New extension for Terrence Mann. Two years, 22 million. Fine. I think he might... I say it might, he might be a bit overrated. 133 is okay. I think people are expecting this gigantic, huge, huge blow up for him. And, and I'm not really sure that it's going to come to that degree, but he's an interesting player. There you go. Maxi at 134. That's probably right on the right spot. I'd say that's from Towns for MVP, which Towns is not winning the MVP, but sure. 
Um, and then Team Nakic. Oh, I got Eric Bledsoe at 135. That's a nice little selection there as well. Um, Kyle Anderson goes at 136. Sean says it probably was him. So it definitely wasn't. There's only one bloke who said it. And if he thinks it was him, it was him. Back to back BB. Got any picks in your queue? I still need a forward pretty clearly. Because I've got a big gaping hole right there. Giggity! So I've got to get one. Bane's probably going to be the starting small forward. So it's weird that he doesn't have forward eligibility. Got point guard eligibility though, which he'll never play. Farton Will Barton goes at 137. I don't know who decides on these position eligibilities. It's pretty weird. Actually, I'm just looking at the screen. Most of the ones on the screen are pretty okay. But some of them are weird. Like I don't think that Bane should be listed as a point guard. Alright. Hey, Josh, who do I support in Melbourne, if anyone? Southeast Melbourne Phoenix or Melbourne United? That's for the NBL, for those of you who don't know. Um, Shawnee, it is, uh, yeah, look, loosely the Phoenix. They're the only team I've been to see uh, live since the NBL's, yeah. Actually, yeah, even when the NBL was firing in the 90s, I never went to a game. I don't know why we never went. But the only team I've actually been to see live is the Phoenix. We saw them against Illawarra when Lamella Ball was playing. So yeah, let's go with the Phoenix. Lowry Markinen goes at 139. Southeast Melbourne. Thad Young. They, the Spurs cut Lucas Sharmanic, which I didn't see coming. They still got one cut to make, whether that's Aminu, whether they trade Young, I don't know. It doesn't look like they're going to be playing him 27 minutes a night, Thad. It looks like he's going to be in this weird 20 minute a night role. I don't really, I don't get the point of him being there. Tim Hardaway at 141. He goes really late, Tim, and he can be a really nice source of scoring. That doesn't always work for every team, but you know, he can be nice in that area of the draft. Um, he says, I hope to see you out at one turner this year watching Big Joe. Yeah, because Joe Chi is playing for Southeast Melbourne this season. I don't think I'll be out there, Shawnee, but you never know. One turner's a long way away. After Nick Batum at 142 goes Precious Achua, Joe Harris, and Darius Baisley at 145. I'm just not in on Baisley. He had every opportunity in the world last year and couldn't crack the top 200. And sure, he might improve, but let me take him at 180. Um, it's a long way away from my next pick. There are not any good centers. Well, Shingun, I would hope, would get to me. He, he won't, though. Hachimura, Kyle Kuzma. So after Baisley goes Terrence Ross and then Monty Morris. Man, I... Wa- if I was Michael Malone and I have no access to their practices or I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, I would be inclined to just say, you know what, Bones, you're starting. Let's go. Let's just see what you can do because we needed some extra shock creation and Morris can't really provide that. And let's be honest, the point guard is Jokic. It's not really Monty Morris. That'll never happen, of course, but it's what I'd try. Alexei Pokyashevsky goes at 148. Doesn't look like Poku will start, but maybe he can get to start as minutes. I don't know. Bruce Brown could be an interesting rebound option for me. Kuz is another one. As I said, Shangoon, maybe. Royce O'Neal's a good rebounder. It's a disgustingly boring pick, but maybe. Serge Ibaka is not having any faith in him being healthy. Joey Ingles goes at 149, and Dylan Brooksy Brooks goes at 150. Pro- could be a steal for Brooks. Um, of course, the broken hand is a bit of a worry, but that's not something that should linger, although he's had this broken hand for a while, I think he had it in the cast at Summer League, which was the start of August. We are, we are two months uh, away from that. That makes me worried. And the fact that they had to announce, oh, yeah, gone back in for some scans or whatever they said, it, it, it's a worry. I don't know why his right thigh soreness results in a cast on his wrist or hand, but that, that is a concern. Eight weeks is a long time for a broken wrist, hand, whatever it is that he's got. Kelly Oubre at 151. While I'm not big on Oubre this season, I think that is totally a, a good spot for him. As we are getting to fill out our roster, I'd need that forward eligible player. Remind me to get a forward eligible player. You can't, of course, because this is recorded in advance. Let's just throw Kuz onto the list. Um, 
Let's throw Rui down there as well. Hachimura's back with the team as well. Shingun, let's throw him down there. Yeah, not Seth Curry. Thanks, mate. Get Seth out of there. Although Shingun doesn't have forward eligibility, does he? No, he does not. All right, after Ubre goes Aaron Gordon, then it goes Derek Rose. Trong is up. Trong's been in a few of these mocks as well. The painter, Matisse Thibel. Oh, was my chair just like clicked? That was weird. Get loose in these mock drafts, don't we? Um, we've smashed through this 50 minutes in and we're, and we're, you know, 155 picks in. That's a fast mock. Still got a, a while to go, but that's fast for a 16-teamer. Well, there he goes. The big fella, Alperen Shengun. Patrick Williams, I think he's going to be ready to start opening night. He can be a good source of steals, and he's forward eligible. So, Jose, nice pick from you. Do I take Do I take Dwight Powell? That is decidedly unsexy, isn't it? But he's going to be their starter. He's really good with percentages. He gets steals. He's not a shot blocker, which I don't care about. Well, neither are Kuzma and Hachimura. He's forward eligible. Oh, there goes Kuz. Um, so, Williams, Dort, Kuz. Why do I keep calling him Kuz? Kyle Kuzma at 158. Derek Favors. I just don't think he's going to play long enough. Yeah, I'm going to take Dwighty. Ah, oh, Tamantha. Oh, fuck off. Hey, fuck off. Um, maybe we do just take Derek Favors here because that is very annoying. And then... What do we do with the next pick? Kent Bazemore? I'm just looking at my list. It doesn't look particularly exciting. Nah, you know what? Let's... I don't normally pick this bloke, but at this spot, Rui Hachimura is fine. It's fine. Maybe he does take this magical leap into becoming Giannis that some people allegedly... Not allegedly. Some people legitimately think will happen. They must be time travelers because I don't think how you could see Rui play and say that with a straight face. But maybe. Bruce Brown's got to come off the board soon. He's in a great spot with no Kyrie. Especially if you're looking for rebounds and some nice field goal percentage. After Rui goes Rick Rubio and then goal goes uh, Cole Anthony. Rubio, then Cole, then Goran Dragic at 164. Let's be honest, Dragic has looked dreadful in the preseason. Um, I, I don't think they can start him. I think it's got to be Van Vliet and Trent. Dragic will get minutes, but he has looked bad. Like, he, And he, he's obviously not young. Dennis Schroeder's got to come into the mix here soon as well. I'm not big on Schroeder, but he's got to be picked soon. I don't think I'll have to make that call on Schroeder, thankfully, because I don't pick again to 192. Royce O'Neal. We're getting to the stage of this sort of draft where you can take more upside flyer picks on guys. Brandon Clark, I would... Grizzlies people were thinking that before the Dylan Brooks injury news, that Clark would not be in the rotation. So he gets a bit of a reprieve now, but we'll see. Kevin Hurd, a fan of Pants at 166. People are taking him at 110, 120 in some drafts, which is crazy to me. But 166 is pretty solid. I like that there. Then Otto Porter at 167. Is it the Otto Porter renaissance? Uh, no, but... If again, if I was Steve Kerr, which I'm clearly not, he'd be in consideration to finish games for me. Wiggins and Porter at the 3-4 with Draymond at the 5. He's looked great in the preseason. Josh the Hitman hard at 168. Theoretically, it could be nice, but they look like they've been marginalizing him and I don't know what role they're going to give him. Back-to-back. How's everyone going? How's everyone... How, you, how is life treating everybody? You can drop this in the YouTube comments as if you're here watching this far as I just wait for these next picks to come through. Who's ringing my doorbell? Just leave the package there, mailman. I'm recording a lot mock draft. Don't you know how important this is? And there goes Dennis Schroeder at 169. Faku goes at 170. Well, that reminds me. Where's Boner? He's definitely going to be a flyer pick for me, Highland. So let's just throw him into the queue. 
Let's throw... That's his full name, by the way. Nation. Let's throw Trey Murphy. Did Trey Murphy... Oh, no. He just goes at 171. So he was going to go into my queue. So Jordan Murphy, the only player there. Not even a real player, by the way. Isaac Okoro uh, at 172. Isaac Okoro has looked worse from a fantasy perspective in this preseason than he did last year. Like, massively worse. Um... Dorian Finney-Smith. Why is he still around? Daniel Tice goes at 173. I know Finney-Smith isn't sexy, but we're at a spot where you've got to look at him. You have to. He's got a pretty strong role on this team. My, my points for my team is pretty rough, though, but yeah, finding those scorers is tough. There goes the Shark, Bruce Brown. Oh, where's my... Shark button. Baby shark, do, 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 do. RJ taking Carmelo Anthony. No interest in that whatsoever. My connection to the draft room has dropped. Why is that? Um, Mallow goes at 176. Jay Crowder goes at 177. Your draft is not running. Excuse me? Draft suspended. Don't know what just happened. Let's resume draft. Seth Curry goes at 178. That's absolutely fine as well. There's some solid value there. Chumra Kiki, Ken Bazemore still uh, available, which is a little bit surprising. Is John Wall going to sit this season and next? I don't, I, I, I don't think so. I think that they will negotiate a buyout after this year or if he's not traded by the trade deadline would be my guess, Samantha. Joshy Richardson at 179. Truma's at 180. Good pick for Truma, I think, there. People just really steering clear of my man, Dorian Finney-Smith. I'm surprised Davion Mitchell didn't go. I saw him go at 100 in a draft the other day. And we're here at 180, and he hasn't gone. That is surprising, because people will seem to love him. So I am surprised. Ken Birch got to start to be looked at soon too. Well, there goes Bagley at 181. Let's throw Birch in there. Looks like he will split minutes with um, Precious. Gaz Trent goes at 182. That's actually, this is about right for Gary Trent. He offers nothing apart from poor field goal percentage in threes. He just is so empty in terms of overall... Pro in a points league, you want to go higher than this, obviously. But in a category league, no, no, no chance. Don't forget, guys, tomorrow, the live stream. 7 p.m. Not 7 p.m. 4 p.m. Eastern, Wednesday, live on YouTube. Myself and a lot of guests answering your questions. So have your questions ready. Super Chats will get preference. Because I feel like we're going to get flooded at times. And we'll try and answer your questions. Dwight Howard... Goes at 184. Uh, there are better options out there than Dwight. There are starters available out there. Marcus Morris still there. Wow, I need some scoring. Marcus Morris makes a lot of sense. There goes Muxy Kleber at 185. That's a long way for Morris to fall here. And Finney Smith, to be honest. They could be my next two picks. And even Ken Birch. I'm surprised to see them all. Well, there goes Morris at 186. I'm surprised to see them all available. No one has taken Kawhi or Jamal Murray or TJ Warren or Clay Thompson. And to be honest, I don't know when TJ is coming back, but he might be back soon. And this is getting really close to having that value. This is a top 100, top 70 player when he returns. And you're taking DiVincenzo, who might miss actually more time than him. Like, I'm not taking Murray or Leonard or, or Thompson, but TJ, I will. Yeah, I will, I will take TJ here if it gets to me. I think getting him at 196 is good. There goes the burner, Jalen Brunson at 188. Or 192, sorry, not 196. Throw TJ at the top there. Him and Dorian will be my two uh, picks, I'm guessing. Got, can they slow? Oh, Shawnee. You're killing me, mate. 
Finney Smith goes. Then Devin Vassell goes at 190. All right, let's, let's go. It's time. TJ Warren. Excuse me, Fantrax. I don't need that bullshit. Um, all right, so TJ Warren. And then what do we do? Kent Bazemore? Um, Cam Johnson? Kim Birch? 25 seconds. Um, let's take Kim. It's too late for Kim Birch. Oh, hang on a second. I didn't get TJ Warren. Tamanta took him. You... Oh, you bastard. I thought I got him. I thought I clicked it. How's that for just being useless? Um, I'm going to take campaign. Fuck, that is frustrating. How did I miss that? Too busy looking at other things. Tamantha. That's annoying. Tamantha, I believe, has a couple of those injured guys there, like Siakam and Warren, which could be great. And the value is amazing. Yeah, he does. He's got Siakam. He's got Porzingis and Warren. But yeah, Siakam at 66, good value. Warren at 191, good value. That It's really going to return some good numbers, I think, for him. He gets Serge Ibaka. That's a, it is a lot of injured guys. Though. 194 for Serge. Naz Reed goes at 195. Cam Johnson goes at 196. And then Jose is up. I want to get Bones with my last pick. KJ Martin can go into the list too. Davion Mitchell surprisingly still there. As I said before. And my next pick's 224. We're 29 picks away. That's a long time. So my team is really strong in rebounds, assists, um, field goal percentage. Pretty good in free throws, blocks, and steals. Okay in turnovers as well. Um, not good in points and pretty low threes. After Cam Johnson goes Lonnie Walker. And then Alex Caruso at 198. Caruso's put up really good numbers in the preseason. Whether that sticks or not, I don't know. Obviously, I don't know. Justin Holiday's still around. Probably going to be a starter for a while here. Gallinari's still there. Cam Reddish. Well, he just went Cam Reddish. He goes Gallinari onto my queue. There goes Justin Holiday at 200. That's really good value, Justin Holiday at 200. Like Holiday was the 144th ranked player last year in 30 minutes, and he, he could get to that again with the injuries. That's really, really good value. I'm going to have to just, don't mind me, just opening my phone as I'm recording. Markel Fultz, obviously not ready to begin the year. Not a surprise there. Um, Aiden making his pick now at 202. Nick Claxton at 202. I've seen Claxton go at like the 130s. I don't know if he's going to play every night, but... Oh, no, Bones. I know who was at the door now. It was my gardener slash my dad coming to mow my front lawn as I'm working. That's all it was. Uh, Bones goes at 203. And then uh, Blunty. Two hundred and four for Wiseman. Grayson Allen goes at two hundred five. Doug McDirt goes at two hundred six. It's been a wild ride this show, hasn't it? Um, I've got to think of a code word for it to say if you're watching to the end of the show and drop it in the comments. Davis Bertans at two seven. There goes Davion at two hundred and eight. And Anthony Simons at 209. That'll do it for RJ. His team is done. So we're into the final round of this draft. Paddy Mills goes at 210. That's really solid, I think. Kent Bazemore is the one that's really sitting around here. He's going to start, man. There's no Horton Tucker. There's no Ariza. 
He's going to start. He's definitely someone I'm getting. Jared Vanderbilt at 211. Um, Reggie Bullock, KCP. Chris Duarte, Kenyon Martin. Or KJ Martin, sorry. Jackson Hayes, another option. There goes Duarte at 212. Hmm. I might even be able to catch some of this Penguins Lightning game after this draft. I know you don't really care about my inner thought process workings, but when I'm waiting for these picks and it's just me here, that's just what's going to happen, isn't it? We're a week away. How many you got guys got drafts coming up? I know, you, again, you can't hear me. Maybe I'm losing my mind. I think I am. Um, KJ Martin goes at 2.13. I can hear Obi crying outside the door now. Ben's doing his online schooling in another room. It's all happening here. So you look to wrap this draft up. Bayes, we, Bayes is not a flyer, but getting him at 220 is great. If I can. We will see whether I can or not, though. Um, Kobe White. Forgotten player this year, Kobe White. Going to miss the start of the year. He's at 214. Gallinari, the Italian cock, goes next. Hands off my cock! At 215. It's absolutely great picks at this point to get a guy like that. Like, Reggie Bullock should be looking to get picked here. Um, Vanderbilt's already gone. I'm very surprised that no one's gone the Murray, Clay, or Kawhi route. Very surprised. Look at this. Ranked 211th, Anthony Brown. Anyone know who that is? Doesn't play for anybody. Bryce Brown. He was signed to Brooklyn and waived one day later. Anyway, um, Reggie Bullock goes with 216. Kevin, Dr. Kev says he's curious to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to take Bazemore if he's there. Quickly is another one who might be an option for me. Why is Bryce Bobby Brown at 214? That's a weird, weird list. Um, after Bradley, Tone Bradley goes Malachi Flynn. We're getting back to my pick here. Watch your mate, Timantha, just screw me over. Although, with what he's been doing, maybe he takes like Jamal Murray or something. Or Clay Thompson. Josh is going to pick Hassan White, so Timantha. Timantha. The world. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's wrap this up, boys. I'm not going to take Hassan Whiteside, by the way, obviously. John Wall gets time expired to Towns for MVP. Is John Wall going to play a game this year? I reckon he might. I reckon he might play a game. Not for Houston, but he might. something might get worked out. I don't know how. I don't know how he can get traded. Who's matching that salary? Um, Jose Inya. can't believe I'm hanging this much on picking Kent Bazemore. But the Lakers are hanging on him as well. Back-to-back -back says he might have achieved the uh, the Logan Roy on the soundboard. I don't know if he did, but someone definitely did. Athens, I think it was. Or maybe it was uh, Tim Anther. Oh, another auto-draft. Moses Brown! Moses Brown. Wow. The hype has died. Yeah, Hassan Whiteside. <laughs> there he is. Moses Brown. The hype's died off there, hasn't it? I can't believe how many questions I used to get about that bloke. James Booknight, scoring well. Not sure there's enough of a role, but scoring well. And at this spot, sure, why not? You're at pick bloody 220. And now Timantha, he's looking to ruin my dreams. Ah, oh, he did it. He did it. What a prick. Fuck, how can you do that to me? My, my, ah, oh, fuck. Ah, uh, no. Um, all right. You know what? Let's just take another less sexy pick. Patrick Beverly. Um, all right. And that is it. Patrick Beverly with my last pick. All right. All right. 
All right, so just gone into basketball monster, so looked at the projected standings now. Tamantha comes out on top. I thought he did a really good job with his draft. And then it was uh, me and Shawnee Randall equal next, followed by the Dr. Dr. Kev, Sports Med Kev at fourth. Um, and then Krish and Evan, very, very similar numbers for them. Then back to back and Towns for MVP. Then it was It's Installing, Aiden Vahidi, Athens Nectarios, Joseinha, Trong, RJ, and Ed Malloy down the bottom. But, of course, these are just projected standings. Who knows how it goes on? It was a really good draft. I was really happy with how it all played out eventually after the shenanigans to begin with. I've lost my mind. I'm going insane. I'm going to go watch some hockey. Guys, follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. Go tomorrow, YouTube. It's 4 p.m. Eastern. We're going for three or four hours. Get your questions ready. Join the live stream. Watch me chat with blokes, and uh, we just talk shit. It's going to be awesome. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.